It is a beautiful day. It's September 2nd, and I thought I would just share with you how I'm transitioning my container garden to a fall garden. And so over here to my left are the last of my peppers. I have two tiers on the original green stock of peppers here. And if you'll recall, about two weeks ago, I had to harvest all my peppers early this year because they were hit with a disease. We just had so much rain. It's called bacterial leaf spot. And um, I did not harvest these, so this will be my last pepper harvest. I'll probably get these in about a week. They have also been hit with the bacterial leaf spot. So there's a good bit of them on there. I've been very happy with the production this year. No complaints, even though I'm a little disappointed about the disease problem. And then the Matt's Wild Cherry tomatoes have just been cranking out and they are exhausted, so I don't see very many on this one. I have a couple more plants I'll show you here in a minute where I have a few more tomatoes. I've been picking these every day for salads. And now this right here is the leaf green stock. And at the top I have the leeks that have been growing all year. I probably should have planted these in an original and maybe just put one or two per pocket. This is my first year growing leeks. I think they're a little bit too crowded. And then down here below I have a lot of arugula doing great. I did start to get um, some worm damage on some of my arugula. I did not put my insect cover on it like I should have right away after I planted them. And so um, I sprayed with BT, an organic method that control worms, and it took care of the problem. So I went back and I planted some more arugula. And um, I'm just keeping my eye out for that little white butterfly. And if I see her, I'm going to run out here and put out my cover. <laughs> Keep her away because I really don't like to spray things. I'd rather use a barrier, and the barriers work great. And so anyway, I use BT. I got it on Amazon. If you guys have a problem with worms on your broccoli or, you know, kale, your turnip greens, your arugula, that kind of thing. Real easy to use. It took care of the problem in probably 24 hours. Okay, and also I wanted to let you guys know that Greenstock has a great sale going on right now until September 6th. It's the Labor Day sale, and there are some amazing prices over there. And plus, if you use my code, if you go through my link and you use my code Rainbow Gardens at checkout, you'll get an additional $10 off of Greenstock. So, um, I also will get a small commission because I'm an affiliate marketer, and I appreciate your support. Um, I'll leave my link below. And I'll also put it here on the screen so you guys can see my link. And then here are the sweet potatoes, just doing great. I hope they're producing sweet potatoes. We'll see. I know there's a lot of leaves. So probably late September, I will um, harvest this original green stock and see if I have some sweet potatoes in there. Hopefully I will, but this is an experiment for me. I've not ever grown sweet potatoes vertically like this. So we'll see. And then over here I have one container where I had my Valencia orange tree. I moved it in here earlier this year. And about oh, a month or two ago I popped in one jade bush bean seed in here. And I've been picking lots of nice green beans. Um, I put some in a curry earlier this week. And so that's one plant. It's doing real well. So I always like to kind of throw in seeds with my containers. Um, just if I notice there's a little extra room. So down here I also have, I think that's a cabbage plant there, because that root ball of that Valencia orange tree really is not very big, and so I figured I had a little extra room I could play around with. Now over here are some more summer vegetables, like cucumbers, and um, I should have some cucumbers here, I'd say within another week, and the pollinators are loving the flowers. So I have about three or four baby cucumbers on this one vine here. And you can see up underneath there. Okay, over here I also had arugula, but as you can see, the worms got a hold of that. So, um, what I will do is just replant some more arugula in there. Okay, and these are the Matt's Wild Cherry Tomatoes. Still cranking out the little tomatoes. And a lot of lovely nasturtiums over here. Just really, really pretty. Love them. They look so good in the little vertical planters. They do so well. They always have done really well in the vertical planters. And um, it was raining a little bit the other day, and the sun was setting, and it just glowed out here. It was pink, 
and these little flowers here were just beautiful. I'll try to show you guys a picture. I think I took one. And like I said, over here, all the arugula was just completely devoured. Well, not all of it, but most of it. There's some that survived <laughs> the worms, so I'll replant that. And then over here is the ginger. I moved into this pot earlier this year. It's still showing a lot of new growth. I also threw out some cilantro seeds and dill seeds over here. And then the sweet potato slips are still growing along the back there. I'll grow them indoors here when a frost becomes uh, close, probably mid-October for me. And then here is another leaf. And up here is basil, which has gone to seed, but the bees are loving it, so I'm leaving it in. And then I have a lot of turnip greens in this leaf planter, okay? I think I put some uh, cilantro over here, maybe. I have some parsley right there. I have fennel. And I have some lettuce right there. Okay, everything's doing real well. Back there I have tarragon. It's about that time of year where I need to cut that back. And I'll start getting some nice new growth here as the cooler temperatures set in. Over here are just some uh, uh, more plants I started from seed inside, and that would be arugula and cabbage and some lettuce. And um, I don't normally start things inside like that, but <clears throat> knowing that I had uh, some summer vegetables I was going to pull out, I wanted to have something else to go in right behind them before I get my first frost. I want them to get a nice, good root system going on them. Okay, and then here are the two green stalks where I had peppers growing, which I harvested a couple of weeks ago, and um, I have planted spinach in here. I have found that the spinach seems to like the original green stalks better than the leaf. At least I think that was the case for me last year. Um, you know, spinach has that long tap root on it, so I think it will do, does better when it can really get deep into the pockets and since these pockets are deeper than the leaf I just think they did better. Spinach always survives my winters very well. Now I had some of my seeds did not come up as you can see here so yesterday I popped more seeds in all the pockets where it looks like I had a problem with germination. The seeds that I used for this one they're called Teton spinach but they are about three or four years old and spinach really does like um, to be sowed the very next year so one year old seed is great but once you start getting three or four year old seed you may have to put a few more seeds in your pockets to get them to come up okay and this is another leaf green stock over here i have a lot of turnip greens and more nasturtiums just really pretty um, some frisee lettuce scallions I think that's a big radish there. And then over here I have some French crisp lettuce that did so well for me earlier this spring. If you'll recall, I had just a beautiful, beautiful leaf green stock full of French crisp lettuce. I had it all the way through June. I think I harvested all of it the first day or two of July. Um, more turnip greens, parsley here. Loving the parsley right now. A lot of that, like I said, a lot of lettuce. And then here's my final green stock. The top I planted cabbage. Okay. And then I have some more French crisp lettuce in here. And then I have cilantro that is just starting to come up. I think I planted those seeds about two weeks ago, maybe 10 to 14 days ago, really. And they're just coming up. It takes forever for cilantro, as I told y'all in one of my last videos. And then I'm leaving the bolting basil in here for all of the pollinators. They also love the nasturtium blooms. They are just covering them up. The hummingbirds also love the nasturtiums. So they've been attracting a lot of hummingbirds to my deck. It's so pretty. Anyway, there you have it. And I'll leave a link down below if you want to check out the green stock sale. Please go through my link. And I would really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day.